like this. And just sat down. Thank you for, yeah. Hey, thank you so much. It's a, a pleasure to be here with you all. You know, a lot of times when you see a beautiful picture these days, you kind of know in your heart that it's been photoshopped. But here we have the unphotoshopped perfect setting and perfect day, and aren't we all fortunate to be here? I was asked to come and just give you a couple reflections on the making of, of the lodge and its, and its history and, and how it connects in, in my life. And I thought I'd turn the clock back, not 75 years, but, but 80 years. A president, Franklin Roosevelt, facing depression across the country, the collapse of the banking system, the collapse of homeownership, the collapse of industry, and very, very tough times. And he said 80 years ago, the country needs, and unless I mistake its temper, the country demands bold, persistent experimentation. It is common sense to take a method and try it. If it fails, admit it frankly and try another. But above all, try something, he continued. We need enthusiasm, imagination, the ability to face facts, even unpleasant ones. We need to correct by drastic means if necessary the faults in our economic system. We need the courage of the young. May every one of us be granted the courage, the faith, and the vision to give the best that is in us. And I think that's what we have here as the result of the best that is in us and bold experimentation. It was that philosophy that drove the creation of the CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps. It was that philosophy that drove the creation of the Works Progress Administration. Now, when this was being built about 77 years ago, there was a WPA team down in Summit Meadow. There was a Civilian Conservation Corps team down in Zigzag Camp. And they brought incredible skills. They brought incredible skills, but they brought really a feeling from the heart of, of gratefulness that they now had a job and the ability to contribute something with their energy, with their sweat, that was a bold vision and something that would mean a lot to America for generations to come. Well, that bold Timberline Lodge design was presented by Roosevelt as something that would, and I quote him, he said, here to Mount Hood will come thousands and thousands of visitors in the coming years, as he saw it. Now, earlier in the day, he was down at Bonneville Dam, commemorating that. And then he was coming up here to Timberline. And he continued, he said, those who follow us to Timberline on their holidays and vacations will represent the enjoyment of new opportunities for play in every season. I mentioned especially every season of the year because we as a nation, he said, are coming to realize the summer is not the only time for play. I look forward to the day when many, many people in this region of the nation are going to come here for skiing and tobogganing and various other forms of winter sports. I think he got it right, didn't he? And he said, you know, when these folks come from across America to visit Timberline Lodge, and he said, quote, Americans who are fulfilling a very desirable objective of citizenship, getting to know their country better. You see, he believed that Americans should travel and they should see their country because, and again I quote, the more they see of it, the more they will realize the privileges which God and nature have given to the American people. And God and nature certainly have given us this great mountain and this beautiful lodge. You know, I first came here when I was in grade school, and the two things that I remember was what an incredible mountain. It was covered with snow, ice, it was a cold day out, and I, I thought, wow, that is a powerful, powerful place. And to be up here high, looking out over the whole Cascades, what a cool thing. The second thing I remember is Heidi. Oh. Anybody remember Heidi? Oh. Heidi and Bruno. Oh. They were part of the original tradition of the lodge, and the Constan family reinitiated uh, that uh, that tradition. And I think there, I think we have a Bruno on the team now, and a Heidi. And are the either one of them here tonight? They're wandering around somewhere. Well. I must say, as, as a, a school kid, you hear about some famous animals uh, like Smokey the Bear. Well, Heidi and Bruno are right up there in my heart. I look forward to seeing them if they're, if they're around. You know, the, uh, 
one of the second time I came up here, I was a 15 year old, came here and uh, at about one in the morning, I and a group of others started hiking up this mountain. And uh, how many have climbed to the top? How many have been up to the summit? Woo! Quite a few, isn't it an incredible experience? I remember two great moments that day. One was standing on top of the mountain right at daybreak, and because the sun's rising in the east, it projected a shadow. Remember when we used to have a lot of grass seed field burning, and there would be like, this smog in the Willamette Valley during the summer? Well, the shadow of Mount Hood was suspended right over the Willamette Valley from the top, and it was a phenomenal sight and a phenomenal vision of the, of the Cascades. And the second great moment that day was when I stepped back through the doors of Timberline Lodge, like, like a building giving you a warm embrace and saying, welcome back, glad you're safe, and then you can order the hot chocolate and the good meal. <laughs> Pretty good feeling. And when Mary and I, and I want to introduce uh, my wife Mary and my daughter Brynn are here, if they can stand and wave their hands. There they, there they are in the aisle. So the very first time, that Mary came here to Oregon with me, it was 1989. Uh, we came up here in August and we hiked to a beautiful, beautiful place called Paradise Park. It's, I don't know how far it is, five, seven miles from here. Uh, anybody been there around the side? Oh, lots of folks. Well, we were there right at the height of the wildflower season, which was just absolutely gorgeous. And the longer we were on the hike, the more we slowed down. It was just such a perfect moment. And then we found out that the, uh, the results of slowing down are nightfalls. <laughs> and we hiked back under a full moon. And it has to be one of the most magical evenings uh, up here on Mount Hood, hiking back in a, in a full moon. And my daughter, for years, has been saying, Dad, next year, next year, can't we climb Mount Hood together? Well, next year she's 15, I climbed it when I'm 15, so... Girl, let's do it next year. You know, Timberline uh, is a special, special building, a special lodge. It had an architectural vision of Gilbert Underwood, the native materials, the roughness, the style of the pioneer uh, craftsmanship that went into it. It had the various motifs, including the pioneer motif and the Indian motif and the wildlife themes. It had murals and does have murals and paintings by what were then uh, some of Oregon's most revered artists. The wrought iron detailing, uh, the wood craftsmanship, the phenomenal beams. I love just seeing the beams in that building. It takes you back to an era when we had a lot bigger trees and bigger beams in our state. But tonight we're not just celebrating the vision for the lodge and the construction of the lodge. We're celebrating the fact that it remains today such a special place. And for that, we have a number of folks to thank. Uh, we have the Konstam family. Uh, Richard originally and, and Jeffrey and the whole extended family. Let's give them a thanks. No, this, the lodge was falling into great disrepair after World War, War II. And it was in the middle of the 50s. The Constant family uh, uh, really restored and has managed all these years. It's uh, uh, a real kind of connection of the heart for them. And the friends of Timberline and the Forest Service, I don't know if there's representatives of the friends of Timberline and the Forest Service. Yes, there are. They've done a phenomenal job being partners in this wonderful lodge. Well, let me wrap this up. I have here, and I'm not sure who, uh, am I presenting this uh, to you, Jeff? <laughs> All three of them. Uh, so this is a, a statement from the Congressional Record. It's uh, what they call a gold leaf statement about recognizing, basically, and celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Timberline Lodge. Wow. Uh, for all the people of Oregon and the people of the United States and the people of the world who have loved and cherished and continue to enjoy Timberline Lodge, thank you. And I'm going to turn this over to uh, John Tullis, who's going to introduce uh, the main act for the next uh, couple hours, uh, uh, Walking Woody's Road. But I just wanted to say a word, a word about uh, Woody Guthrie, if I, if I can. Well, so uh, this is also the 100th year, what would have been Woody Guthrie's 100th anniversary. 
And he was here in Oregon. He walked these mountains. He walked our, our rivers. And he celebrated all that they're about. So it's so appropriate that when we're celebrating the 75th anniversary of Timberline Lodge, we're also celebrating uh, Woody's 100th anniversary. And um, he captured in his songs such a, a, a powerful, powerful visions. And I was, I was thinking on the way up, well, perhaps some of the most famous lines that we all learned in grade school, uh, this land is your land, this land is my land. I was thinking that tonight, if he, is, he was here and singing that song, he'd be singing, this lodge is your lodge, this lodge is my lodge. Thank you all very much for being here and have a great evening. I just need to take two seconds and I, there's a